so I'm just going to dive into the story because the other thing I'm grateful for is like how much work I have to do right now, which is kind of what our story is about today. Um, so the story is about Sisyphus. And so if you haven't heard of Sisyphus, it's, it's, this, uh, it's this, this myth, um, Greek myth, I believe. Um, and so basically Sisyphus, he, he was like a king, right? And he was, he, he's kind of like a tyrant, right? He's, he, I kind of think of him as like the modern or the, the old like Vladimir Putin, right? He's like, like he's really good for the economy of the kingdom, right? But he's also a tyrant and he kills people he doesn't like. Right. And, and so like, like he's kind of a hero cause like everyone likes like living in a kingdom where like there's lots of money and wealth and stuff. But at the same time, like they don't like some of the bad things he does. Right. So it's kind of like a naughty king. So he rules with an iron fist. Right. And I um, mean, he even plotted to kill his brother and like he's this guy is so smart and so cunning. He even tries to like trick death. Like he gets death and the, like the God of death into chains and then like no one can die in the kingdom. Like he upsets the entire like, balance of the world cause he's like so smart. He just wants to like figure out a way to live forever and to get what he wants, right? So he's, he's a tyrant, right? He's like a control freak, right? And he abuses his power, right? And so the gods decide to get together and punish him, right? And his punishment is that he has to roll a boulder up a hill for the rest of his life in the underworld. And the problem is like every time he gets like, he's just the boulder, like just right to the top of the hill and like Zeus, like the god, like just brings it back down again. So like every day he just has to push the boulder up, up the hill and falls back down, up the hill and back down, up the hill and back down. And so, right, we can see how that could be kind of a terrible punishment. But I think, and you know, this is one of the things I see in American culture today. I think we've got this, like, I think this myth is like plays a big role in how we think about work in our society, right? And I think we have a really bad misinterpretation of it, right? Because we think like this is like, this is hell, right? To, like to push a boulder up a hill every day and to not get to the top, like that's hell. But remember we've talked about in meetings before where how like, you know, you're never really gonna get to the top of the mountain, right? It's like you have this goal in life and you're always aiming for the top. And like, once you get to the top of one mountain, there's just another mountain to go on right next. And, and when we're actually happiest in life, and this research shows when we're actually happiest in life is when we're moving up the mountain towards our goals, right? So a lot of people think of Sisyphus as like, you know, He's sitting at the bottom of the hill. He's got to push the boulder up again. He's like miserable and like dreading it. And like, oh, I don't want to go to work again. I don't want to, I don't want to push this boulder up the hill again. But I think it's like the opposite. I think this guy's got to be like super happy, right? Because like he gets to do work every day. So I, it reminds me of, you know, when I was a kid, um, uh, we had like four acres I grew up on and a bunch of big trees and my dad was a woodworker. So he, we always just had like trees around. And one of the things my dad wanted me to do was like cut, cut wood for firewood. And this was like a completely pointless, worthless task because we had so much firewood. Like we could last like a hundred years in a zombie apocalypse with all the firewood we had. But still my dad wanted me to go out and chop firewood. And here's the thing, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was so much fun. Like, like it's just so fulfilling to like do physical labor. Now I wouldn't want to do physical labor 40 hours a week. I would feel like pretty miserable at that point. But you know, a couple hours a week chopping wood, doing some hard physical labor, like it's fun. It's fulfilling, it's rewarding. So even though I knew it was completely a pointless task, like, so now today, I mean, 20 years later, like the wood is just rotting <laughs> at my parents' house. These giant stacks of wood is all like mushrooms are growing on them, right? Like it's, we're not using it for firewood. So there was no point to doing that work, right? Like, like there was nothing I was getting out of that work other than the, do, the satisfaction of doing the work itself, right? And like the satisfaction of helping my family, like helping my dad because he, you know, he was busy, he didn't have time to do it. And he wanted to teach me some responsibility, right? And it was a great, it was a great experience. So like, like I, 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 I missed those days. Now when I went to visit my friend last summer, uh, you know, I was like, can I chop some firewood for you, man? Like, like, I see you got this firewood around. Can I just chop some for you? Like, so and like, cause it's fun. Right. And I think that's how work should be. Like work should be fun. Like it work is innately fulfilling. I think the real version of hell for Sisyphus would have been if he had like this boulder, he had to push up a hill and he wasn't allowed to do it. So every day he has to just sit there and look at all this work that's to be done and he can't do anything. That would be a real nightmare. Right. And, and that's the thing with human beings. It's like, if you don't have something meaningful to do with your life, if you don't have like meaningful work to do, you're going to be depressed, right? You're going to be unfulfilled. And that's one of the reasons I think we have this huge uh, epidemic of like narcotic addiction in the United States right now is because like there's so much unemployment, and it's like, what else are you going to do? Like, you don't have a job. You don't have anything to do with your life. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. There's no value. It's like, I'm just going to do drugs and like, just forget my life. Right. And that's a, that's tragic. Like that's hell. Like that's a nightmare. Like that's real torture. Right. To be in that state. 
so, you know, to be where I am in life, to have like so much work to do is like, there's this mountain to push this boulder up and it's like, I'm never going to get done with like that. That's, that's happiness. That's joy. That's fulfillment. Right. It's like, I'm, I'm very blessed to be in that place. And I think we're all very blessed to have, to have work to do, right. To have meaningful work to do. So I think your, your work has to have purpose and meaning. Right. And you know, there was this, some stories from concentration camps of, you know, these Nazi guards would basically make, make their, the inmates like carry big bags of salt, like one side of the camp to the other and back and one side of the camp to the other and back. And it was like completely purposeless, meaningful, meaningless work. Right. And that, that's torture, right. To do work that literally has no meaning, like just to make someone miserable. Like that's torture, but to have work where you're making the world better to add value to your family, to society, to your own life. Like that's, that's not torture. Like that's fulfilling. And I see a lot of people in America have this mindset that like, you know, I don't want to go to work. You know, it's, and, and I get it. Like if you're doing work that you don't find as meaningful, like that totally makes sense. But like, you have to find something meaningful for you. Like, so if it's not your job, like find something else that you love to do, find something that you can add value to the world. Right. Cause work isn't just what you do at your job. Right. I mean, there's so much work to do in life. There's so much duty in life, right. To, to feed yourself, to feed your family, to get up every day, to get eight hours of sleep a night, to take care of your body. Right. Like we have like an endless list of responsibilities and duties in life. Right. And so there's two ways you can look at it. Like, Oh no, I have all this stuff to do. It's terrible. You know, woe is me. I want to be on the beach somewhere. Or you can take on that responsibility, right? And be excited about it and be passionate about it and find how it's meaningful to do that work, right? Because, you know, as far as I can tell, if you're a human being, there's going to be a lot of work to do. <laughs> Even if you don't have a job, like you just got to take care of yourself. I mean, that alone is a lot of work, right? And if you don't do it for you know, a month, a year, five years, you know, it goes downhill really fast. You know, we talked about before how, you know, if you just quit your job and sit on your couch for a couple of years, like your life for your family would get a whole lot worse. Right. And so I think that's one of our biggest duties in life. It's like, let's just not make things worse. Right. Like at the very least, let's just, let's just not make things worse for myself, for my family, for the people I care about. Right. And I think, you know, the next level from that is like, let's find a meaningful goal. Let's find a meaningful purpose. Let's find something to shoot for, to aim for, and work towards making that a reality. You know, I had a mentor, he said, you know, Tom, here's the thing, getting rich is boring. And this was a guy who's, you know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, super successful business guy. He's like, getting rich is boring. It's like, you know, every day you just do the same thing over and over and over again. It's like you have this business and you just have to, you know, you treat your customers really well and you keep making products and you keep, you know, you just keep doing the same thing over and over again. He said, you know, most people just can't deal with it. Like they just, they can't deal with the boredom of like doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for 30 years. And so that they don't do it. And I think that's, that's why we have to find meaning in our work, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, we still got to you know, respond to emails from authors and we still have to, you know, edit manuscripts and format them and do the cover designs. It's like you do the same thing over and over and over again. Right. And after, you know, a month, 10 years, 50 years, it can get really boring unless you find a way to make it meaningful for you. Right. Like, and that's something that's very personal, right? It's not like your boss can say, Hey, you know, this work is meaningful for you. You know, it doesn't work that way. It's like, you have to find that meaning for yourself, right? You have to find what's really important for you and you have to find the fulfillment in your work, right? Just like when I was chopping firewood as a kid, like I could have been super unhappy about it. I could have been like, you know, F you dad. Like, I don't want to do this. Right. Like there's, we could, we always have that, the, that choice, right? Like, if, are we going to accept our responsibility and enjoy it? Or are we going to shirk our responsibility and have that cynical nihilistic attitude about it? Right. So we all get to choose, right? We get to choose our attitude. And again, we all have to like so much repetitive work to do in life. Like there, there's, I mean, there's so much to do in life. And, and I think about our ancestors, you know, like 10,000 years ago, I mean, people like, you know, they had to like make bows and like hunt animals and like, and then like butcher the animals and like, and like forage for food, like all day. And like all this work they had to do, like just to survive, like just to put food on the table for their family. Right. Like that is so much work. That's so much to do. That's so much responsibility. Like none of us have that much responsibility today right? Like, like we just don't, we have lives that are so much simpler 
in a way it's like yes it's more complex there's so much going on but in a way it's like so much simpler like you can just go to the grocery store and, and buy food if you have money right like it's you don't have to spend like weeks preparing for a hunt to feed your family right you don't have to go for days or weeks without food and like really hungry right so we're super blessed we're super super blessed today and so you wouldn't be here if your ancestors hadn't done an enormous amount of work right they had an enormous amount of responsibility like all your parents your grandparents great grandparents thousands of generations of humans did an enormous amount of work so you could have life so you could be here and i think we owe the next generation like the same debt like the same responsibility right to 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 do the kind of work that will support our families and make the world better and make it better for our children and grandchildren and great grandchildren And here's the thing is like doing the little things, like it makes like all the difference, right? It's like, it's like the little things that make a big difference. It's, it's, you know, there's a uh, cassava and, and I don't actually know where it comes from, but I saw it in South America and they grow it there. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's this food that is, I'm funny you guys have eaten in the Philippines, right? And it's really good. Like I love cassava. The problem is like the skin is poisonous. And if, if you're making cassava and you don't take off the skin, you kill your family, right? It's like, it's the little things, like just little distinctions, like make a make all the difference, right? And there's a lot of little things today, right? Like with email and computers, like not working, and like, you know, I have to go on Google Drive and I have to find this file, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot, of, there's just a lot of detailed work we have to do today, right? And it's so important, right? Like, like never underestimate the importance of like the little details, right? Because it makes all the difference. And it's also the stuff that it's the stuff that's most likely to make you a little bit irritable, right? The stuff that's most likely to have you have that negative attitude, like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to find that file. I don't want to, you know, do those little things, right? But like, it's, it's what's important, right? The little things are important. And so we can look at that, you know, routine work as, you know, we can choose our attitude how we want to look at that. And I think what helps is like if you can find meaning in it. Right. So, so find what's meaningful to you. And I talked about you know, how one-on-one means with all of you so far, except Jennifer and well, Jethro coming up today. Um, I know Maria had a goal, you know, to buy a house. Right. And, and that's a worthy goal. Right. And, and you all have your own goals in life. And, and what I found is so helpful in, in having a better attitude about work is connecting it to your goals. Right. So like every time you're doing something that's like unpleasant, you're like not looking forward to this task, like, okay, how is this helping me buy my house? How is this helping me achieve my goal? How is this helping get me to the top of the hill that I want to go to? Right. And, and make that connection in your mind. Cause if you don't be intentional about it, if you don't be purposeful about it, it's really easy to slip down that slope of cynicism and negativity. Right. And you've seen what happens to people who go down that slope, right? Like it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Right. And so you don't want your life to be worse and worse and worse. You want to be better and better and better. Right. And I think the way you do this by having worthy goals, and meaningful goals, that's why we spent so much. That's why I spent so much time with all of you talking about where your goals are. Right. Because it's, it's so important. It's not for me. Right. It's not like, like I want you to have goals so like I can have a better company. Like, yeah, I know it does help the company, but it's really about you. It's like, what do you really want for your life? And let's help you get there. Like, let's help you get that because that's what life is about. Right. It's not about just clocking into your job and, you know, putting your hours in and, you know, feeding your family and you're done. Like, there's so much more to life than that. And I want to help you get that. But you can't get that without finding your goals, finding your purpose, finding that meaning, finding and, and connecting that meaning to what you're doing, right? So if you're ever like frustrated with something, like find a way to, to connect that task, that job, that duty you have in life to what's really meaningful to you. The other thing about this story is like there's a cycle, right? So Sisyphus, like every day he has to push the boulder up the hill and every night it falls down and then he goes to sleep and he wakes up and he does it again. And it's, it's a cycle. Or just like our life, right? Like we wake up, we do some work, have some fun with the family. Like we, have, like we have cycles of life, right? And there's the cycle of work and there's a cycle of rest and there's a cycle of work and rest and work and rest and work and rest, right? It goes on and on. That's what life is, at, is like. And so we have to understand that cycle. Like, like life is all about cycles and timing, right? It's like the seasons, you know, like you have a crop in the fall. If you do the work in the spring, right? If you don't do the work in the spring, you don't get the crop in the fall, right? And then your family starts. You don't survive the winter, right? So we all have to 
understand that cycle and embrace that cycle. You know, Jim Rohn said, you know, can you sit down and do 50 push-ups right now? Right. And this guy's like, no, I can't, I can't do 50 push-ups right now. And he said, yes, you can. Anyone, everyone in this room, you can do 50 push-ups right now. Right. Cause here's what you do. You get down, you do five push-ups, you rest a little, you do five more and you rest a little and you do five more and you rest a little and you do 10 more and then 10 more and then 15 and then 20. Right. It's like when you do work and you rest and you do work and you rest, you get better. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. Right. And so I know a lot of you are in new jobs here and you're working on stuff like you've never done before. Like you have no experience, you have no skill set for it. And I don't expect you to be perfect from day one. Right. That's because you're going to, you're going to do five push ups here and then you're going to do six and then you're going to do seven. Then you can do eight. And before you know it, you're going to be a star. Right. Cause you're going to learn, you're going to learn by doing, and that's how you learn in life. You learn by doing right. You learn by making mistakes. You learn by, by failing and failing and failing and failing and saying, Hey, that didn't work. So I'm going to do it a different way. Right. You learn by doing. And you're going to get better and you're going to get stronger. Right. Imagine Sisyphus pushing this boulder up the hill for like 50 years. Like he is the best boulder up a hill pusher in the world after 50 years. Right. Like, like, I mean, think about like the pride you would have on your work after 50 years of pushing a boulder up hill. You'd be like, I know every nook and cranny of this hill. And like, like I know just the place to push the ball and just the right angle to do. And you know, my back muscles are so strong because I've been doing this for so long. Like no one can beat me at that. That's my game. That's my thing. That's what I'm great at. Right. And that's what work is like. Like that's what really fulfilling work is like, is like you just get better and better and better and better until like you look around and you're like, you're teaching everyone else what to do. Like you're, you're showing everyone else how to do it better because you've put the time and effort in to learn it better than anyone else. Cause you're that dedicated, you're that committed to it. Right. And those are the type of people is like, like you're super inspired when you meet, when you see people like that. Right. That's why I think like sports are so popular, right? Like you watch like a basketball player, like, like Kobe Bryant, or I don't even, I don't watch basketball anymore. So like whoever like the hot player is today, right? Like you watch these amazing sports athletes and it's just like, it's, it's inspiring to see people who have like put that much dedication and commitment to something. You can just see the beauty. Even if you don't play the sport, you're just like, wow, that's so impressive what they can do. Right. And all of us have the same opportunity. You don't have to be, you know, on TV to be great at what you do. Right. And there's a lot of people who have really mediocre, mediocre jobs, right. Boring jobs, quote unquote, and they do it spectacularly well. You know, there's this, this great show I love. It's called dirty jobs. I don't know. Have you seen that show? Dirty jobs. It's so much fun. You just got to watch like one episode on YouTube or something. It's, it's really fun. So you see these people and they're doing like disgusting jobs. They're like cleaning out sewers and like, you know, doing, working at oil refineries. And, and you would think like this is the most miserable job ever. And you, you listen to these people in this show and like they love what they do, right? Like they're like having so much fun. Like they're probably having more fun than we are, right? Like there's, there's this one show is like there's this guy and he's like, I don't know if it's like oilers or, or poop. I think he has poop. He's like just covered in poop from like the sewers, right? And he's just covered and it's like, you know, all he's just brown all over. And then he just has a huge smile and you just see his white teeth popping out. And he's just like, he's like, he's a hero, right? He's a freaking hero. Cause like who else is going to do that job? Right. And who else is going to do that job that freaking well? And who else can do that job that freaking well for like 40 years to feed his family? Right. It's like, it's like that guy's a hero. Right. And we're all heroes. Like, like no matter what you're doing, you're a hero. If you do it well, if you put all yourself into it, if you put all your effort into it, you're a hero, right? And we all have that opportunity. But it's all about your attitude, right? It's about, are you willing to pick up that boulder every day? Even when you're tired, even when you don't feel like it, even when you're a little bit sick and I got a sore throat right now. It's like, am I going to just like cancel a meeting day or I'm going to show up, do my best, right? And I'm going to do my best. Cause like, what else are you going to do while you're here? You know? Why not just do your best? So that's what I want to help you guys with is like, how can you make your life more meaningful? Like, how can you make your work more meaningful? And not just here at the company, but like, you know, just regular work, the regular duties you have in life. How can you make that more meaningful? And I think what really helps again is like having those goals and having that intention and connecting everything you do to how is that helping you achieve your goals? How is it helping you fulfill your intentions, your objectives in life, right? Like, how is it better for your family and your community and the world, the work that you're doing, the duties that you're doing every day? So here's another thing I think is that is that that responsibility is what gives life meaning, right? It's like, it's like when that guy who cleans out poop from the sewer says, you know, this is my job and I'm going to do it. It's, he's not saying I have a contract with my employer and I'm showing up to make a paycheck. He's saying, this is my job 
this is my duty. This is why I'm here to clean this up so that, you know, our whole city can live without being covered in poop, right? That's like one of the most important jobs. I heard with medical doctors and they, they said, you know, it reminded me many times that the most important job in the world are the people who take care of the septic systems. Because if that stuff fails, the society goes to hell really fast, right? Like really fast, like overnight. And so those guys are heroes and they're not saying this is my job. Like I have a contract. They're not saying this is my job. I'm signing up for a paycheck. They're saying this is my job. This is my duty. This is why I'm here on this planet to do this, to serve my community, to serve my family. And it's a totally different game, right? You have two people at the same job and one has that, this is my job. This is my duty. I'm a hero mindset. The other one says, I'm just showing up for a paycheck. I hate my work. I hate my life. I'd rather be on the beach somewhere. Their lives are going completely opposite directions right? And the results of those philosophies and those attitudes over a month, a year, five years, 10 years, 50 years is the difference between a really happy, fulfilling life and a really miserable, crappy life, right? And, and we all know this, right? But it's just like putting these ideas, concepts into, into concrete language and like really thinking about it, like really thinking about like, what would your life be like if you had went this way? What would your life be like if you went that way? Right? I know as a company, like we have responsibility as people, we have responsibility to our authors, right? We have responsibility to our readers. We have responsibility to each other, right? And those are, those are serious duties. It's like, you know, if all of us decide to like skip on one of those responsibilities, like it all falls apart really quick, right? And we've talked about companies before that like they just fell apart because they weren't responsible. Like Gawker, Gawker was like not responsible for what they were doing. They were not responsible for readers. They were not responsible for the impact they were having in the planet. Right. And they got destroyed for it. Right. And so. Super. Yeah.